Look, looks good. Okay, we're all here. Uh, member Vander Whelan is not attending this evening, so I will now call this Committee of Adjustment meeting held on July the 27th, 2022. Come to order at 7.13 p.m. May I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved by Cooney, seconded by Webster. All in favor? Terry, thank you. Any disclosures of pecuniary interest this evening? No. No, thank you. Committee of Adjustment meeting, minutes dated June the 22nd, 2022. Any concerns from that meeting? Not seeing any. We have a mover and a seconder that the Committee of Adjustment minutes dated June 22nd, 2022 be adopted as presented. Moved by Cooney, seconded by Webster. All in favor? Motion carried. Welcome to this Committee of Adjustment meeting to allow the public an opportunity to express their views regarding the proposed minor variances and consents within the Township of Springwater. Each applicant and their agent, if applicable, will be given the opportunity to present the applications to the committee and public. Additional information on each of the applications, including any presentation materials, is available in the Committee of Agenda on the Township website. Following, those members of the public whom registered to make oral submissions prior to 4.30 p.m. yesterday, July 26, 2022, will be given the opportunity to do so. All oral submissions will be included in the meeting's minutes and form part of the public record, including the name and address of the speaker as information collected under the Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. Minutes of the meeting will be posted on the Township website. All comments our question should be addressed through the air, through the chair. <laughs> application number one, would the secretary treasurer please introduce the first application item number 4.1 in the agenda. Thank you, Chair Gannon. Item 4.1 on the agenda is minor variance application A2822 submitted by Glucker Metal Inc., owner of lands known municipally as 13 William Street. The purpose and effect of the application is to facilitate the expansion of an existing industrial building by creating an enclosed and covered space over the existing loading bays. The applicant is seeking a reduced minimum number of 80 parking spaces, whereas section 26.5.7 requires a minimum of 100 spaces. Thank you. Have there been any additional correspondence or comments that have been received? Comments were received from engineering stating that given the scope of work, no further comment is required. Comments were received from finance stating that the development charges will be applicable in accordance with bylaw 2018-045 as amended bylaw 2021-117 subject to the exemption available under section 14.1.8 for the enlargement of an existing industrial building. Thank you. May please have the applicant introduce themselves and explain <clears throat> things that you're looking to have occur. Uh, good evening, Chair and Committee members. As a brief introduction, my name is Joy Tigler, and I'll be presenting alongside Victoria Lameau um, to represent the minor variance application for the proposed expansion of the Glucler Metals Industrial Building located at uh, 13 William Street in Elmville. Um, I'll just now share my screen so you can um, see the presentation. All right, is everyone able to see my screen? Go ahead, we're good. Yep. Okay. Um, one moment. There we are. So as you can see on the map to the left, the subject property is located in the northwestern region of the Elmville settlement area. Zooming in, we can see that the subject property is surrounded by a number of similar industrial uses located to the north and the east. And to the south is the um, Elmville Community Arena and to the west is a number of low density residential uses. From a policy perspective, the subject property is within the um, Elmville settlement area by the County of Simcoe official plan and the industrial designation by the Springwater official plan. Additionally, the Springwater zoning bylaw situates the subject property within the general industrial inside storage MI7 exception zone. Um, this exception was um, 
added to the zoning bylaw prior to the occupancy and ownership of the subject property of the client Glugler Metals. Um, and these related to the parking conditions in addition to the um, building envelope of the industrial building. As you can see on the site plan, um, the proposed expansion will um, add an additional 387.2 meters squared to the, to the building on the northern frontage. Um, and it will be flush with the building envelope and additionally with the building height, which is less than 11 meters. Um, the um, new overhead doors will be um, additionally um, enclosed by um, garage doors, as you can see in the image here. As mentioned previously, our minor variance application relates to the minimum parking spaces of eight in request for 80 parking spaces, as opposed to the permitted minimum of 100 spaces by zoning bylaw section 26, 5.7. I'll now illustrate this minor variance application in relation to the four tests, being whether this application is minor in nature, whether the variance is desirable for the appropriate development, whether um, the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw is maintained, and if the general intent and purpose of the official plan is maintained. So due to the nature of um, shift work at Glugler Metals um, and the industrial sector, the existing 80 parking spaces as opposed to the required 100 parking spaces can suitably accommodate all the employees and visitors on the subject property um, in today's terms and also in the future. So we believe that the existing 80 parking spaces as opposed to the required 100 spaces is considered minor in nature. And as illustrated by the employee statistics, it is believed by Glugler Metals that if the company were to grow and expand, the maximum number of cars on the subject property would range between 60 to 75 during shift changes. Secondly, is the proposed variance desirable for the appropriate development? Um, we believe that the proposed development will not increase the employability of the building, rather it will make it more efficient um, for Glucler Metal products um, because of the sens their sensitivity to um, the natural elements such as rain. Um, and we believe that the existing 80 parking spaces is appropriate for the, de um, for the mm -hmm. desirable development. Thirdly, um, is the uh, minor variance um, appropriate and meets the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw? Again, we believe that the proposed development will not change the existing demand for parking on the subject property and merely um, make the building flush with the existing building envelope. And last, is the general intent and purpose of the official plan maintained? The intent and objectives of the industrial designation are listed below. Firstly, is to provide a wide variety of industrial and quasi-commercial uses. Second, to create a flexible environment for businesses, which recognizes the changing needs of the private sector. And third, to maintain and enhance the visual and lifestyle characteristics and qualities of the township by encouraging where appropriate aesthetic and functional site design. Having regard for community design standards of this plan. So in summary, the enclosed minor variance application seeks to recognize the existing parking conditions on the subject property through the minor variance application to permit the proposed development. We believe that the proposed enclosure of the loading bays will improve the functionality of the existing industrial building by um, protecting Glugler metals products from the natural elements. Um, and lastly, we believe that the proposal meets the four tests under Section 45.1 of the Planning Act. I'll now pass it on to Victoria, who will answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Would you want to close your screen down, please? Thank you. Are there any members of the public registered to make any oral submissions this evening? Yeah, there are no members of the public who have registered to make an oral submission. Thank you. To the committee, do any members of the committee have any questions or comments or concerns that they wish to discuss? Member Cooney, go ahead. 
um, <clears throat> through the chair to the applicant, uh, Victoria. Um, I uh, just want some clarification with regards to the, uh, I guess the trucks that will be entering, will they back into the building or will they impede traffic on William Street when they're parked in the loading base? Uh, so through you chair to member Cooney, it's my understanding that they will back in um, similar to as they do now. Um, we were we were never uh, told that it was going to have any impact on on traffic and and the, the you know the traffic of the trucks coming in and out of the site um, would be maintained. That that is what we've been told by the, the owners um, at this time. Okay, thank you. I was just trying to get a clarification. The bays now have a large cushion at the overhead door yes. that the truck would back into. Yeah. Um, I, I'm with the the I guess the building moved out closer to the street with those trucks parked in front. My concern was that it was going to impede uh, the traffic. So the trucks will. Uh, sorry, through you, Chair. Um, again, to Member Cudi. The trucks will actually go into the area that we're proposing to be enclosed. Really, the reasoning for that is the material that's being handled from the truck into the building is sensitive to the weather. So really, the trucks will still be located in the same area. It'll essentially just be covered with larger doors in front um, to be closed when needed. But uh, it's my understanding that really the front will maintain open. It's more just for you know covering from rain, things like that. Sorry, I, d I didn't first uh, understand your question. but. Hopefully that uh, clarifies. Yes, it did. Thank you very much. Thank you. Planner Belcourt, did you wish to comment on that or are you okay? Um, thank you, Chair Gannon. I have no further comments. Thank you. Member Webster, go ahead. Um, thank you. I'm just have to make sure I'm not on mute. Uh, um, can you hear me? I'm always nervous. Uh, thank you for your uh, application. And um, so I've got a couple of, a couple of questions. Uh, I guess my first question is through the chair to the applicant. Um, you are you are not going to use up existing parking spaces with this loading dock coverage, I presume. Could you let me know? Uh, through you, chair to member Webster, that is correct. Uh, so nothing physically will change from a parking perspective. It's really just covering of the loading bay area. Great, and uh, I happen to know that that is a northern exposure there, and the uh, loading um, and unloading um, is uh, uh, certainly in certain weather conditions not the best. So uh, we uh, thank you for your um, investment in spring water and uh, to make it better for all involved, including the people who work there and the drivers who are in and out of there. The other question mm -hmm. I have is for our planning department. Um, I'm 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 wondering why. Uh, there's need of a minor variance when we're not losing any parking spots. Uh, the, the parking spots were 80, they are going to be 80 still. And uh, these, 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 the applicant has been uh, uh, requested to make a minor variance at uh, substantial cost and, and uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not getting it. Can, perhaps you could enlighten us on this, please. Um, thank you, Chair Gannon. Through you to Member Webster. So existing today is 80 parking spaces. This is considered legal non-conforming as the bylaw does require 100. The reason that a minor variance is triggered is because they are adding additional building area um, that they would have to add parking spaces for that building area based on a calculation of that um, new square footage. Um, so they would have to maintain the existing 80 plus add however many there is for that um, additional area. But because there's no production space, we thought um, that a minor variance was fair to go through instead of a zoning bylaw amendment at this time. All right, Member Webster. Uh, thank you and, and through the chair to the uh, planner Belcourt. I'm sorry, but I totally disagree with the planning's position on this. It's not necessary, it's not required. The parking spots are not gonna be lost. Uh, it's simply a, a more convenient way to do business uh, with no nothing other than an investment by the applicant. They're not losing anything. They're not gonna add production space. It's simply a matter of getting vehicles in and out of there, um, which has been going in and out of there for perhaps 40 years. 
I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed actually that the applicant has to go through this. I, I, I see it as totally unnecessary and I will support this application. And I, as a committee member on Committee of Adjustment, I apologize to the applicant. I, I think it's totally unnecessary. Thank you. Director Spagnuolo, I see that you're um, being embarrassed. You assist me. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think it's I think it's important to note that the provisions of the bylaw are legal, they're binding, and that staff are required to interpret the bylaw and to apply the bylaw how it's written. If 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 staff wasn't required to do that, then the easiest and the path of least resistance would have been taken to not require a variance or a zoning bylaw on them. However, the zoning bylaw is worded in such a way that provides for legal non-complying status to the property and is worded in a way where if there is an increase in the total square footage to the building, there needs to be a minor variance to ensure that building complies with the zoning bylaw, which has legal status. So I can appreciate uh, Member Webster's comments about, about trying to allow for businesses to move through a seamless process when they're looking to improve their operations. However, legally, these are requirements to ensure compliance with the zoning bylaw. Staff does not have the ability to pick and choose whether or not to require something. It's a matter of ensuring that the bylaw is complied with and that the provisions of the bylaw are legally adhered to. Thank you, Chair Gannon. Um, my question then would be, uh, what is the age of this bylaw? Is it new? Is it old? Uh, as, I, as I've said before, as far as I know, there's been 80 parking spots there for approximately 40 years. If this is a new bylaw or relatively new bylaw to the existing, to, to when the 80 spots were, were, were provided, I'm, I'm, if, it, if this is new, then they're asking, I, I would guess, it looks to me like they're being asked to comply with something that uh, that's not relevant to their business. So when when was the when is this bylaw? How new is this bylaw? Is it the new new official plan or what age is it? Mr. Chairman, through to to Member Webster, the the zoning bylaw was updated in two thousand and four. There were housekeeping amendments that were done in two thousand and twelve, and the non compliance and legal non complying provisions of the bylaw were not addressed through those updating processes. The legal non-complying provisions that are currently within the bylaw are very similar, if not the same, as the previous legal non-complying provisions that were part of the old Elmville bylaw. So there has not been any new changes to the bylaw through an updating process that has had an impact to require this. This is the fact that there's a legal non-complying use here. And in order to facilitate the expansion, Staff was of the opinion that a minor variance would be the easiest and the seamless way to carry forward with this, as opposed to a zoning bylaw amendment, which is $1,500 and can be a three month process plus appeal period. So this was the solution that staff arrived at and, uh, and based on the, the, the recommendation that's there, staff is completely on side with the applicant and Glucor Metals to go forward and do their expansion. Hey, Director. That being said, I have a motion here, and that's committee of adjustment having given consideration to the applicable provisions of section 45 of the Planning Act, the official plan of the Township of Springwater, the characteristics of the land in question and its surroundings, as addressed in the planning report on the application dated July 27, 2022. Correspondence received and information presented at the hearing held on July the 27, 2022, and the discussion on the matter hereby approve application A28-22 as applied for. May I have a mover and seconder, please? Moved by Cooney, seconded by Kennedy. All in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'll ask the Secretary Treasurer now to please introduce the next application, item number 4.2 in the agenda. Thank you, Chair Gannon. Item number 4.2 on the agenda is minor variance application A2922 submitted by Akash Patel Residential Design on behalf of Jay Mayo, owner of Lansno Municipally as 2080 South Orlake Road. 
The purpose and effect of the application is to renovate the existing seasonal dwelling to add additional amenity space via two outdoor patios. Proposed addition renov renovation will exceed the maximum lot coverage at 24.3%, whereas section 14.3.5 permits a maximum of 20%. Thank you. Has there been any, any additional comments or correspondence that have been received? Yes, comments were received from finance stating that development charges are not applicable. Thank you. Please have the applicant introduce themselves and explain what it is that you're looking for. Hello, thank you committee. Uh, my name is Akash Patel and I'm the applicant and designer today uh, representing the homeowner Joe Mayo for 2080 South Or Lake Road. The home at 2080 South Or Lake Road has been a family cottage for generations for the Mayo family and the homeowner would like to continue uh, to keep this cottage for his family and would like to renovate the home and add additional space to accommodate their growing and extended family. The increase in lot coverage will provide increased amenity outdoor spaces, uh, the majority of uh, being two outdoor patios. And the, the proposed renovation does require an increase in the lot coverage. I'm going to just pull up the site plan that I'd like to share. So we can see on the left-hand side, we do have the existing site plan uh, with the dash line indicating uh, portions to being removed. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, we can see the outline of uh, the larger uh, extension uh, being proposed, hatched in um, with the additional lot coverage, uh, showing with a, a larger porch there on the north side and another covered entry porch uh, on the east side there. Um, all other bylaws are being complied with uh, in the area, uh, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Can you take down your screen, please? Are there any members of the public registered to make any oral submissions this evening? Thank you. There are no members of the public who have registered to make an oral submission. Thank you. Committee, do you have any questions, comments, concerns that you wish to address? Thank you. Not seeing any, I have a motion for A29 slash 22. Committee of adjustment having given consideration to the applicable provisions of section 45 of the Planning Act official plan of the Township of Springwater, characteristics of the land in question and its surroundings as addressed in the planning report on the application dated July the 27th, 2022. Correspondence received and information presented at the hearing held on July the 27th, 2022 and the discussions on the matter hereby approve application A29 slash 22 as applied for. I have a mover and seconder, please. Moved by Webster, seconded by Kennedy. All in favor? The motion is carried. Thank, Thank you, sir. There's a 20 day appeal period. Thank you. And when the Secretary Treasurer is ready, we can introduce item number 4.3 in the agenda. Thank you, Chair Gannon. Item 4.3 on the agenda is minor variance application A30 2020. Sorry, A3022, submitted by C. Baldwin on behalf of 1484999 Ontario Limited, owner of lands known municipally as 141 Queen Street West. The purpose and effect of the application is to facilitate the expans expansion of an existing commercial building for retail auto parts services. The proposed expansion does not meet the rear yard depth requirement. The applicant is requesting a rear yard depth of 4.5 meters, whereas section 16.3.5 requires a minimum of 7.5 meters. Thank you. Have there been any additional comments or correspondence that have been received? Yeah. Com comments were received from finance stating that development charges are applicable in accordance with bylaw 2018-045 as amended by bylaw 2021-117 at the non-residential rate. Thank you. We have the applicant uh, introduce themselves and explain what it is that you're looking for to approve. Good evening. It's uh, Chad Baldwin. I have uh, the auto parts store, Elmville Auto Supply at CarQuest on 141 Queen Street West, Elmville. And I would like to expand my building so that I can uh, make a more efficient space for uh, how much we've been growing lately. 
and I have any, I, I don't have any great pictures or anything. So if there's any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you. Are there any members of the public registered to make any oral submissions this evening? Thank you. There are no members of the public who have registered to make an oral submission. Thank you. Committee members, do you have any questions, comments, concerns? Member Cooney, go ahead. You're muted, Lauren. You're muted. You're muted. Sorry. Um, through through the chair, through uh, direct to Director Spagnol with regards to the application, just uh, for some clarification. Um, the number of parking spots on the property, uh, I assume comply because it hasn't been identified. Um, with the future access to Thomas Street, will that cause um, a non-compliant issue to arise? Um, uh, chair to uh, Mr. Clooney, uh, I, we have, I don't know if you guys have the diagram from March of 2021, uh, 2001, when we oh, first built, uh, we have, it needed 30 parking spots. We have 28 now, even with the phase two addition that we are looking at. So we are still within compliance, even with the uh, future uh, uh, entrance onto Thomas Street, which was worked right into the plans 21 years ago. Thank you, Director Spagnol. Do you want to answer Mr. Cooney's question? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to, to Member Cooney. Uh, the, the parking was reviewed in pre consultation with Mr. Baldwin. Um, I had been in discussion with Mr. Baldwin. I don't know, Mr. Baldwin, I think it's been for two months or three months or probably four months to go over the plan. Um, based on the fact that we've got an existing condition with the entrance and the fact that it's an, an expansion of the existing building, there's not anticipated to be any conflict with the, the access as shown within the, um, within the site development plan. Uh, in saying that, the, uh, Mr. Baldwin will also be required to go through a site plan amendment process where things such as access, a drainage, will be looked at in closer detail once he uh, once you know provided that the committee approves of the minor variance and it's at that point where Mr. Baldwin will be looking more specifically at the uh, the site design and uh, in particulars of, of how that site will be developed uh, with the expansion. Okay so just just to clarify then the two the two parking spots that will be lost when the Thomas Street connection occurs he's still he's still going to be sufficient in parking for the property correct? That is correct, Member Cooney, yes. Okay, and just uh, with regards to site plan, if uh, um, Mr. Baldwin, with regards to the parking that's located at the rear, he's obviously going to need a spot to back up to get out. Uh, additional coverage of asphalt is not a big either, uh, issue either. It's a slight difference, but he's not, he's not at a point where he's going to push his limits, I assume. Uh, through your, through you, Member Chair uh, Cooney, to, to <clears throat> Member uh, Chair Gannon, to Member Cooney, um, those types of details as far as the circulation, how the site will will circulate, will be dealt with through site plan control. At this point, I can't, I can't determine whether or not that whether what will be required as far as reversing and things like that. However, I can say that from an emergency service standpoint. It was pre uh, emergency services was pre consulted so access around the building was looked at it from an emergency service standpoint. Again, vehicular uh, movement around the site will be looked at closer when we get to the site plan amendment. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Member Webster, go ahead. Thank you, Chair Gannon. Through you to uh, Director Spagnol. Uh, now that now that the parking well, the parking spaces have come up a couple of times or this is the second time I'm a little confused here so uh did I hear correctly that the building footprint requires 30 parking spots you're breaking up a little bit there member Webster could you move your microphone up a little bit did, did I hear correctly that the building the building per the building footprint as it is requires 30 parking spots Are you chair chair again and to member Webster the bylaw requires 28, I believe. I'm just going over what, what was required. The bylaw actually requires 28 and 30 were provided. So in essence, the original site plan provided for two additional spaces. 
I think it got crossed up in translation, the message that was provided. And that's why when, when the applications were brought forward for the variances, parking was not needed because the site was actually over-designed for the footprint that was on the property. So right now, the way it sits, there's enough parking as per the bylaw for the footprint of the building and the expansion. Um, okay, get, can I, may I continue, Chair Gannon? Uh, so the original building footprint required 28 and 30 was provided. Am I, am I, am I correct? Yes. And there's going to be two lost because of a, a, a proposed entry onto Thomas Street? Uh, or possibility of two lost? Uh, member Gannon through, through to, to or sorry, Chair Gannon through to, to Member Webb. I'm confused as to where the loss of the two space. Director Spade, you were broken up there. You're frozen actually right at the moment. I am somewhat confused as to where the loss of two places comes into, two parking spots comes into play as a result of a connection to Thomas Street. Um, so am I. But that's, that's, that's why I'm, I'm somewhat confused as that's not anticipated to occur through this through this application or through the placement of Thomas Street um, when the development goes forward. So this is news well, there, to me. There, there's a, on the, on the I'm sorry, um, uh, I, I, I don't mean to have a conversation, but through you to, to uh, Chair Gannon, there's a, on the site plan, there's a future entry to Thomas Street, which, which looks to take away two parking spaces, either they're existing or proposed, I can't tell from the map, <laughs> Member Cooney, do you wish to in interject here? Yes, if, if I may. Um, the um, uh, Member Webster is, is correct. The site plan does indicate, the site plan provided with the application does indicate two parking spots being lost in the future when the Thomas Street access is provided. Um, I have counted the parking sp spaces that are there now, excluding those two spots. And there will be 29, not including the handicapped parking. So in accordance with Director Spagnol, who, who says the property only needs 28, the applicant is actually providing 29 with the handicap. And that includes the loss of the two. So in, in, in essence, um, the property is providing the sufficient parking. I just wanted to get it clarified, that's all. And Chair Gannon, if I may, the the site plan that's that's on record right now is a quite dated site plan so there hasn't been any clear indication that that access will be required through any subdivision approvals as a secondary access as well um so as far as those two spots go um that's going to require further consideration again through the amended site plan and uh, and once development goes forward with with the Y River Estates development, which which this property backs onto, um, so to my mind, based on the the site plan that's there, there's more than enough parking, and that's a consideration that'll have to be determined and looked at once we go through site plan, and once the subdivision is fully developed. Webster, thank you, Chair Gannon. Again, again, through you to Director Spagnol. So. The 28, 29, 30, whatever we're working with here, um, does that include the proposed addition plus uh, some mention of residential here? Is that sufficient? Is that where we're at? Because the bylaws, whatever the bylaw says, and I don't know what it says, maybe you could enlighten me there. Thank you. Through you, Chair Gannon, the, to Member Webster. Yes, there, there's sufficient parking as per the bylaw. And that was reviewed moving through the through the determination of the aspects of the minor variance. If it With did the, not, if, if the parking provisions were not being met, then there'd be the need to include that in this various variance application. Um, so just for clarification, if I could, uh, th so the additional uh, commercial footage will require additional parking spots. However, there's mention here that there will be two residential units above that. 
which I presume will also require parking spots. Uh, am I on my, my dreaming here or what? Here Gannon, through you to, to member Webster, I think I need to state it again. The uses that are being proposed in this building have been reviewed to ensure that sufficient parking is being met. So staff is well aware of the uses that are being proposed and that there's additional store space and then there's two residential units. That has all been reviewed as part of the zoning review with respect to parking. And if that's been reviewed, then can we know what that parking space requirement is based on the proposal? Through you, Chair Gann, and through to, to Member Webster at this point, I'd have to go back in my notes and take a look at this. As I said, we've been going through this and I've been working with Mr. Baldwin on this application for I think it's been, I wanna say four months now. Um, I would have to go back and find my notes. I don't have that answer for you right now. For Kennedy, do you have any comment or question? Thank you. Based on the conversation, I think we should move forward. I have a motion here that the committee adjustment, having given consideration to the applicable provisions of section 45 of the Planning Act, the official plan of the Township of Springwater, characteristics of the land in question and its surroundings as addressed in the planning report on the application dated July the 27, 2022. Correspondence received and information presented at the hearing held on July the 27th, 2022, and the discussion on the matter hereby approve application A30 2022 as applied for. I have a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Cooney, seconded by Kennedy. All in favor? Motion is carried. If I could, uh, Chair, I would like to make a note that my no vote is based on the information received as not being complete enough for me to make a decision. So that's the reason for my no vote. Not because I object to the addition, not because I object to anything about it. I just want to be sure based on the previous application, the parking spaces seem to be an issue in the municipality and they have to be the same for everybody. Thank you. So, so noted. Thank you, Mr. Baldwin, for your assistance this evening. There's a 20 day appeal period. Thank you, Chair. And when the Secretary Treasurer is available, item number four. Thank you, Chair Gannon. Item number 4.4 .4 on the agenda is minor variance application A3122 submitted by B and S Bourne, owner of lands known municipally as 1904 Vesper Valley Road. The purpose and effect of the application is to permit an accessory building that will exceed the maximum size provisions of zoning bylaw 5000. The applicant is requesting a maximum total detached accessory building area of 260.13 square meters, whereas section 33.3.14.1H permits a maximum area of 115 square meters and a maximum height of 6.8 meters, whereas section 3.7.5B permits a maximum height of 4.5 meters or the height of the dwelling, whichever is the lesser. Thank you. Any additional correspondence or comments that have been received? Yes, comments were received from finance stating that development charges are not applicable. Thank you. May I have the applicant please introduce themselves and explain what it is that you're looking for and why you need the relief. Go ahead, Mr. Bourne. Oh, sorry. Good evening, Chair. Good evening, committee members. Sorry, we're having trouble with our video to be able to come in, but uh, what we're looking to do is build a storage facility on our property. Uh, we are zoned agricultural with 20 acres. Uh, we do have some storage issues. We don't have a, currently a garage on our property, um, and we do have trailers, tractors, things to help maintain the property that we're within. Um, and we do have collector cars that we do collect, um, that we do like to restore and work on in those, uh, in the facilities. And currently we don't have those, uh, they, that ability to be able to do so at this point. Um, we're looking at building this as a workshop to be able to help us through those pieces as well. Um, plus be able to provide storage for our other, uh, you know, camper trailers, trailers, um, and vehicles that way. Um, so we are, um, currently not exceeding any of the, uh, residents gross square meters um, piece that we have. We're actually underneath that from our residents. 
um, and the variance for the height are the house height is about 23 feet and the building itself would be about 22 feet so we're within that as well from what we understand are there any members of the public registered to make any oral submissions this evening thank you there are no members of the public who have registered to make an oral submission thank you committee do you have any questions comments concerns Member Kennedy, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, through you, Chair, to uh, staff. I just, I realize that this is zoned agricultural. However, it is in a residential um, hamlet community. Um, I'm curious with regards to the definition of a minor variance here when they're proposing to build a structure that is only 68 square feet smaller than the primary dwelling on the property. So I'm just looking for my own clarification with regards to the size that they're proposing to put here um, and real, recognizing that in an agricultural area, a farm something this size would be considered normal. Um, in my opinion, this is not in a regular agricultural area, and I'm concerned with regards to the reference that this is a minor. Thank you. Planner Belcourt. Thank you, Chair Gannon. Through yourself to Member Kennedy. Um, so when the staff is reviewing and making recommendation, it is based on the four tests of a minor variance under the Planning Act. So staff went through those in our planning report and determined that um, in our opinion, it does meet the four tests and in, is minor in nature. One of the criteria that we do look at is that the, um, the size of the accessory structure does not um, exceed the gross floor area of the dwelling. We also took a look at where the structure would be located on the property, which in this case is significantly set back from the house and also buffered by the existing vegetation that exists on the lot. Um, further to that, the size of this property is much larger than a lot of the other houses in this little hamlet area, as you mentioned. Um, many of them are, um, are smaller one acre parcels, however, this one is um, much larger than that. So that was also taken into factor, as well as the maintenance of a larger property requires additional storage space than you would typically see on a smaller property or an in-town property. So all those were factored in to determine that this was minor and appropriate development for this property. Thank you. Member Thank Kennedy. you. You're good with that? Thank you. Question to the applicant. Is this a home occupation or is this a hobby? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, yes, it's a hobby. Um, we've always collected cars. Uh, we don't always have time and resources to fix them, but we'd love to have a space that we could have them inside out of the elements. Um, just because the wear and tear on our equipment is um, difficult. Yeah. Okay. I have a motion then for Apple, for item A31 slash 22, the committee of adjustment having given consideration to the applicable provisions of section 45 of the Planning Act. The official plans of the township of Springwater, the characteristics of the land in question and its surroundings as addressed in the planning report on the application dated July 27, 2022. Correspondence received and information presented at the hearing held on July the 27, 2022. And the discussion on the matter hereby approve application A31-22 as applied for. May I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved by Webster, seconded by Cooney. All in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. And when the secretary treasurer is ready, number five. Thank you, Chair Gannon. Item 4.5 on the agenda is consent application B10-2022, submitted by D and M. Danny Look, owner of lands known municipally as 1430 Gill Road. The purpose of the application is to sever and convey approximately 6.07 hectares of vacant land located at 1430 Gill Road to the abutting property at 1478 Gill Road through the boundary adjustment process. Thank you. Have there been any additional correspondence or comments that have been received? 
Yes, comments were received from Hydro One stating no concerns and comments were received from Binance stating that development charges are not applicable. Thank you. May the applicant please introduce themselves and advise us what it is that you're looking for. Good evening, Chair and Committee. My name is Donna Danilot. This Hi. is my husband, Mike Danilot. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Um, we uh, are asking for boundary adjustment as suggested. We live at 1430 Gill Road, a property our family has owned since 1973. For 20 of those years, it's been under a forest management plan. We're environmentalists, we love our land and would never have severed it unless until our neighbor, uh, he's a York Region police officer and a former military officer uh, who also loves the land, um, asked if we would be willing to sever some land in order for his family to purchase it and uh, enlarge their property. Um, we own 48 acres and he is on this, I guess there's the southern part southern. of our property. He's the last boundary to our land. There are about, I think, six houses in between ours and theirs. And so we are proposing to sever uh, just a, a swath of land, as you've seen on the uh, map I've submitted. Uh, the reason we're going forward with this to you is that um, Tyler has also agreed to do forest management. He has also agreed, as you've seen the letter submitted that he will care for the property and land. He has no um, uh, ideas to build, to do anything, just to enjoy it with his family. And uh, so we would like to bless his family as he will also bless our family. So we're looking for your approval on this proposed uh, boundary adjustment. Thank you. Are there any members of the public registered to make any oral submissions this evening? Thank you. There are no members of the public who have registered to make an oral submission. Thank you. Committee, any questions, comments, concerns? Not seeing any, I have a motion then for B slash or B10 slash 22. That the committee of adjustment having given consideration to the applicable provisions of section 53 of the Planning Act, mm -hmm. the official plan of the Township of Springwater characteristics of the subject land and its surroundings as addressed in the planning report on the subject application dated July the 27th, 2022, the correspondence received and information presented at the hearing held on July the 27th, 2022. Discussion on the matter hereby approve of the application as applied for subject to the following conditions. Number one, that the applicant satisfy all the requirements financial or otherwise of the municipality. Number two, that the applicant provide two copies of the registered survey of the severed lot prepared by an Ontario land surveyor. Number three, that the owner applicant satisfy and be responsible for all costs to satisfy section 65 of the Drainage Act 1999, 1990 if applicable. And number four, that the conveyed lands be merged with the benefiting lands known municipally as 1478 Gill Road. The so Danilux, do you understand those? Yes, those sir. Yes, we do. No yes, problem. we do. Thank you. We have a mover and a seconder for this application then, please. Moved by Kennedy, seconded by Cooney. All in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank there's you. A 20 day there's a 20-day appeal period. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. You're welcome. And when the Secretary of Treasurer is available, please introduce item 4.6 on the agenda. Thank you, Chair Gannon. Item 4.6 on the agenda is consent application B1122 by D. Graham, owner of lands known municipally as 176 Queen Street West and 1091 Floss Road 10 West. The purpose of the application is to sever and convey 22.66 hectares of farmland located at 1091 Floss Road 10 West to the abutting farm parcel through the boundary adjustment process. Thank you. Any additional comments or correspondence regarding this file? Comments were received from Hydro One stating no concerns and from finance stating that development charges are not applicable. Comments were also received from the township's drainage superintendent state, stating that the properties are assessed into the Martin Municipal Drain passed by bylaw 1363A and that a condition will be required to revise the drainage assessment schedule. Thank you. And please have the applicant introduce themselves and provide any comments if necessary. Do we have? Hi, good evening, committee. This is Kim Swift. Um, I am Doug Graham's partner. Doug is absent from this meeting right now. He's bringing a load of shorts uh, over to Palmerston uh, Grains in, in Palmerston. So I'm here on my own. Um, we have uh, requested or um, to basically have 1091 Floss Road 10 
severed from Queen Street and merged with Doug's original farm, who he's had for probably 40-some-odd years now, and then consolidated the two parcels into one farm property, basically. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thank you. Are there any members of the public registered to make any oral submissions this evening? Thank you. There are no members of the public who have registered to make an oral submission. Thank you. Committee, any questions, comments, concerns? I see none, then I have a motion then for application B 11 slash 22. That the Committee of Adjustment, having given consideration to the applicable provisions of Section 53 of the Planning Act, the official plan of the Township of Springwater, characteristics of the subject land and its surroundings as addressed in the planning report on the subject application dated July the 27th, 2022, the correspondence received and information presented at the hearing held on July the 27th, 2022 and the discussion on the matter hereby approve of the applications as applied for subject to the following conditions. Number one, that the applicant meet all requirements financial otherwise for the municipality. Number two, that the applicant provide two copies of the registered survey of the conveyed lands prepared by an Ontario land surveyor. Number three, that the owner applicant satisfy and be responsible for all costs to satisfy section 65 of the drainage act 1990, if applicable, and number four, that the conveyed lands be merged with the benefiting lands identified as property identification number 58378-0328. You understand those conditions, Ms. Swift? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Thank you. May have a may have a mover and seconder, please. Moved by Cooney, seconded by Kennedy. All in favor? Thank you. The application is approved. There's a 20-day appeal period. Thank you very much, committee. Thank you. And on to other business to discuss this evening. There's a couple items that I would like to bring to his, the committee's attention. First one is uh, to the secretary treasurer. Can you confirm that our mileage changes this year? Yes, so the mileage rate did go up as of July 1st. Um, it only went up a penny, so it's at 59 cents for the okay. remainder of the year. Thank you. And the other item that I wish to bring forward is at the last council meeting, there was a report submitted regarding the terms of reference for the committee of adjustment. Uh, do you have any information on that, Director Spagnol, as to whether that was approved or not? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I'd have to go back to the council meeting. I know I, you are correct that, that there was a report that was brought forward regarding committees. I would have to go back just to just to take a look at what the specific council resolution was regarding that report, and I can uh, I can foresee to make sure that that the committee members have the resolution that resulted from those discussions. So I wouldn't want to paraphrase, but but we can send off that resolution to the committee of adjustment so that you have that, and then if you have any questions, we can discuss that uh, at our next meeting. If that's uh, if that if you're agreeable to that, Mr. Chair. Yep, that's fine. Just for the committee's members. Uh, information from what I read from that report. Uh, there was some uh, changes to the makeup of the committee from seven to five members. Uh, there is a suggestion that uh, all members of the committee would receive laptops as opposed to paper copies of the reports. And I think those were the high, highlight of the, the two big things that I can recall from that. But if Director Spagnol would uh, be so kind as to send that to the committee, that would be appreciated. I can do that, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, my only next question is our August meeting. Do we have a quorum for our August meeting? Member Cooney, will you be available? Can you clarify what the date is for that meeting? Certainly. Yeah, it is August 24th. I should be here. <laughs> <laughs> Member Kennedy? <laughs> Member Kennedy? Uh, yeah, I should be here. I am just have some concerns with regards to my um, technical, if you're not going to be here, Chair, that if I'm supposed to be chairing that meeting, I'm having huge issues with this uh, computer that the, count or the township has provided for me. Um, so just 
wondering if I can get it into you guys for your IT guys to take a look at it. It probably needs a million updates. Um, <laughs> probably needs to be cleaned. So I don't know. Um, but for August, I should be here. Yeah. Thank you. Member Webster. I'm expecting to be here. <laughs> well, I'm expecting to be on vacation at a lake. So I probably can get into the meeting if really necessary, but my, my uh, time would sooner be sitting on the kayak or watching the white waves go by. So we will uh, see that and member Kennedy, if you can uh, drop your computer off at the township office, they're, they're, they're there till 5.30 now. So you should be able to, to make that. Any other questions, comments, concerns this evening? Well, thank I you. None. Sorry. Dennis, just one other question. Um, did we clarify the September meeting date? So I was going to comment on that or send you guys an email, but um, it looked like I didn't receive a response back from you yet, Patty, but it looked like everyone else was good for September 22nd was the date that worked for everyone. Yeah, um, I, I am available for that as well. Okay, so yeah, I was going to change that to the 22nd, the Thursday before it was scheduled. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments, questions, concerns, committee? Very interesting evening tonight. I have a motion <laughs> then that this committee of adjustment meeting held on July the 27th, 2022 does now adjourn at 8.09 p.m. May I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved by Mr. Cooney, seconded by Mr. Webster. All in favor? Thank you. The meeting is now officially adjourned. Thank you, Chair Gannon and staff and other members.